Good day, Alex. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. Absolutely. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You know that I'm, I'm a big fan and uh, I also consider you a friend, so here I am. And, and we're Navy buddies almost, uh, <laughs> different, separated by generations, but uh, we too. So. Right. Um, for, let's start with, uh, can you please give us, uh, uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit about your background in the L&D and world of instruction? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm Alex Ellis, as you guys probably know already. So I uh, actually was born in Venezuela, I grew up in Venezuela until I was 14 and then came to the States here when I was 14, went through high school. So I almost left like uh, three different cultures as I was growing up. So my mother's Cuban, my dad's Venezuelan. And then as, 14, as a 14 year old, here I am jumping into junior high, high school when you know how it used to be a thing. So um, I say that because all of this has been part of my development and my uh, learning process. I, I had to endure certain things that probably some people don't have to endure today. <laughs> but after, after kind of adapting to the environment, right, uh, learning the language uh, as, of la as of last week, <laughs> yeah, so you can tell I have a sense of humor. Uh, so learning the language and just being um, being able to adapt to the environment that I was in, right? The new world, the new country, the new culture. Um, after that, I joined the Navy. Uh, I joined the Navy. I served six years as a hospital corpsman, which is what some people like to call a medic, but don't do that. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then. In that, in, in the work of, of serving in the Navy, in the U.S. Navy, it was an interesting thing because in technicality, you can, you can think that that was the beginning of L&D for me because I was a customer of one of the biggest systems, uh, instruction systems in the world. And from there, I, as I obtained leadership, I devel started developing other sailors, other people, uh, people on the staff. So that passion, that, you know, the results of what I did, which at the time I didn't know what I was doing, um, was really rewarding. And I think that's, you know, what motivates a lot of learning professionals. So after that, you know, I, <clears throat> I found out that learning and development is a career, that there are people out there teaching others how to do work, how to do their job, that type of thing. So... I, like uh, any other military person, I did the normal thing, which is research the heck out of it, right? Like find out where, you know, where I go, what do I need to do? What do I get? And I ran into, at the time, I ran into like ATD and things like that, networks like that. I ran into, I needed a master's in education or something like that. That was the guidance. So I went and did those things. I got uh, degrees. Uh, today, fast forward today, you know, I got certifications, degrees. I worked in Fortune 100 companies, uh, including Dell, Centene Corporation, and some others. And uh, as of last year, I started working as a consultant, instructional designer. And I consider myself an instructional systems developer, designer, not just instructional designer. We've talked about those differences before. It's 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 funny that you 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 were in the Navy culture, but you didn't bring up that part about you served as a as a corpsman for the Marines, which is another culture altogether. So you've been uh, culturized uh, uh, to the max, I think. It's true. Yes, yes. So I yeah, you you are certainly right. I I think one of the main things that the Navy teaches you in the military period is adaptability. So, yeah, uh, it's true. When you uh, when you when you say you're a corpsman in the Navy, that's just hanging out on ships or in hospitals, and it's really not not much different than a regular job in a hospital or something like that. But mm -hmm. when you serve with the Marines, <laughs> uh, you're in their house. So yeah, you have to quickly adapt because by nature that culture is a bully culture and it's not bully in a negative way. It just makes you, it tests you from day one. Yeah. 
Yeah, adaptability. You will either adapt or they'll adapt. Yeah, you. I mean, you're the what we're saying. <laughs> we're, the, we're the speck of blue and the sea of green. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I served on a helicopter carrier with 600 sailors and uh, 2,400 Marines. So I, uh, and I, my uh, office space, my workspace uh, was in Marine country, as they called it on our ship, yeah. a helicopter yeah. carrier. Anyway. Uh, no, no one better. I will say this. No one better to serve with. Really proud of my time with them. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I hated a lot of days with them. <laughs> we all do that. <laughs> Well, thank you for your service, and uh, now on to our main event here. Um, please share with us a, a little bit of a background about uh, this thing you've launched, e-learning launch. Tell us, tell us what's that? What's that for? What's that all about? Yeah, so you know, after working in the industry for for a bit, and um, and building a social media presence, you know, in, in LinkedIn, uh, I'm all worse right now to 21, 22,000 followers. Uh, primarily, that all was an interesting thing because I started in an interesting thing in my career, interesting time in my career. I was, uh, I made a <clears throat> the role of director at one point, right? And uh, I thought in my head, you know, the normal things when you've never done this and it's the first thing you do. And... I felt accomplished, I felt uh, really happy. I was like, oh man, I made it. This is awesome. Finally, you know, got the great car, got the house by the golf course, all that stuff. Awesome. And then uh, six months later, I got laid off. So I noticed something that uh, happened and this is a reflection, of course, but I, until that time, I was just like many learning professionals that I hear about stagnant. You know, I wasn't growing on my own time. I wasn't dedicating my own personal time to grow as a professional. I was just doing work and then going home. So when this happened, when I got laid off, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready to kick back, you know, step back into the industry and do something. But I had to hustle. So the main thing I did is uh, I had to take a pay cut, huge pay cut. But I started my social media presence. So that's when I started um, looking at LinkedIn. Of course, like anybody else, you know, jumping on LinkedIn because they need a job, right? Um, but I tell you today, that's the wrong approach. You should be there uh, at least on a weekly basis, just adding to setting up a presence for yourself um, because it prepares you for everything else. But I will say then, so I started doing that and I noticed that people were writing uh, some people were writing things and, and, you know, based on my background and the knowledge that I had at the time, I was like, well, that's not right. That's, that's not accurate. So I was like, okay, let me start writing. I need to start writing some articles and correct some things. So I started doing that. And, uh, you know, that's been now what, seven years or so of doing that. And through the interactions and the connections on LinkedIn, people have reached out continuously uh, because they see me do things or, you know, they see my projects and things like that. I want to do what you do. How do I do it? How do I get to do what you're doing? How do you know? So all these messages coming directly to LinkedIn. I started helping people like giving them tips. Yeah, do this, do that, do this, do that. And I'm thinking, OK, this got to be like a mass scale thing that we can do. I'm a systemic guy. So I'm thinking, OK, how can we do this and help the most people as possible? And so. The idea was to set up an academy and I actually did this like a month. It was three weeks after I started consulting. So after I started consulting, got a big project, I was set for the year. I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. And, and uh, I was lucky enough at the time I partnered with a good buddy of mine, Aaron King. And, uh, and we started the idea. We started things going. He had to drop off afterwards, but. It's been now a glorious year, basically. I mean, it's a year and a month. And uh, it, what we do is close the academic gap from academic degrees to employers. See, the problem is that I notice and that I learn is, and my conversations with Aaron and everybody else is like, the 80% of my success did not come from my college degree. So it came from learning the skills that I use on an everyday basis. I learned on my own. There was no college you can go to. There was no academy. 
There was nothing like that. You only rely on the software. You rely maybe on things like that. Luckily, you know, Articulate had a good thing when they started, when they created the uh, learning community. But again, it's all a self-driven approach. So you learn launch is the space where if you want to work as a learning professional, specifically an instructional designer and a learning developer, you have all the skills. Well, very cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what kinds of uh, sessions you put on, what the focus was on those, uh, who's attending? Yeah, so it's about closing the academic gap, right? And so what we mean by that is I, I really got tired of people coming to me and saying, hey, I got a master's degree in education or instructional design and technology, which, you know, all these programs in college, they, they say instructional design technology. And when they say technology, they don't mean what people think generally in technology, like software applications. What they're saying is just, oh, yeah, uh, here's a template how to do learning objectives. That's technology. <laughs> you know, it's the tool. So the problem with that is, you know, people go through the schools, they do four, you know, they do their years, two years or whatever, a master's or six years can combine, if you would, spend over $40,000, they get out of that degree, and they don't know how to do anything. Uh, they don't know how to translate and communicate what they have in a theoretic framework through media, which is 90% of what employers are looking for. So if employers are looking for one thing and academia is doing something else, there's got to be something in between that helps out. And that's basically what a learn launch is. So the skills are, um, you know, the way that we set up the skills and the strategy is really minded on someone looking for a job, someone wanting to work as an instructional designer. As the pandemic progressed, we have all these teachers that were confronted with the ridiculous situation, really, of having to present their courses or their classes on VILT, you know, on a webinar, as in the same time, simultaneously with a face-to-face. -face. So something absurd that all these school districts are doing, I guess it's just lack of knowledge and preparation, but that's basically what they're doing. So... All these teachers want to, you know, a lot of the teachers want to transcend, you know, want to transition because obviously it's not a, it's not a good environment, especially we know the salaries are very limited. And in comparison, salaries in L&D are like probably, if not double, a good chunk, you know, a good third more of yeah. salary. So it'll be a huge, substantial increase for folks like that. So that's that's the strategy there. It's like, hey, you're looking you're looking to get to work. I am telling people that if they come to the academy, if they do specific things, they can pretty much get very competitive within 90 days. Excellent. So what, uh, what, what things will they learn? Uh, uh, tell us about the, the specific programs, the, the specific skills that, uh, that you've got as part of this academy. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, so primarily we focus on the most popular tools that companies are using you know i worked 15 years in the industry so i know what tools are being used people talk about uh you know your articulate storyline your adobe captivates your camtasia for video so <clears throat> we also have something in audacity which is uh, audacity which is audio editing so we try to focus on things that uh, for one perspective is you can get a free trial of the software and run with it and the other part is, is being used in the comp and it's relevant. It's being used in the industry. So yeah. Articulate Storyline, for example, is one of the quintessential tools. And with uh, Articulate 360, which is the suite, you also get Articulate Rice. So we're planning to work and bring Rice into the, into the set for this in terms of uh, courses and abilities. But primarily, Storyline is the focus. We have a course that is self-paced and we also do live cohorts. So the main thing about in our launch that is the main difference for people to understand is that we are giving you feedback. So the instructors give you feedback on your work. You are graded 
you're not graded, let's say, but you're, you're evaluated on the quality of your work sample, on your ability to create a work sample. So we don't teach you software. We teach you how to do things with software. And by learning how to do things with software, you are going to repeat so many motions. You're going to go through so many concepts in the tools that you got to use within the software that, guess what? You're going to learn the software. So and you're, and you're building a portfolio of the work examples, right? Exactly. So in the strategy, if you were to think, if I was going to talk to anyone here that was listening and, you know, they wanted to start an L&D within the next six months or next or be competitive in the next 90 days. Well, first thing is to so we'll take the digital, uh, digital portfolio course, start your digital portfolio with barely any money. And that experience alone will kind of get you familiarized with web technology, right? What, what, does it, what does it take to put a website up and what, how do you maintain it? That type of stuff. And then from there, go to the Storyland course. Now, you, you trust me that my basic courses are not basic like people think basic. Uh, the course that is called the self-paced Articulate Storyland course starts you up with concepts that seem complex but they're made easy because you know i'm there explaining how it works and then you're able to communicate with me in terms of you having issues once you get that we pack you up what we call the trifecta is you get camtasia so you join one of our cohorts to do camtasia and that allows you to do video explainer videos and most importantly screencasting so the ability to teach others through this format um, and do do recordings of what you're showing and even show people what you can do and that type of thing. So those three things, those three elements, you get those three things down, you are already competitive in a world where, you know, anyone with a laptop can create any type of learning module. Now, I'm not saying that by doing that, you are an instructional designer source, because obviously you haven't touched any of theory and word process and scripts and storyboards and all the behind the stage, behind the scenes things. That's why we have this program. We just wrapped up one. It's called Enterprise ID. And Enterprise ID is an eight week cohort that will put you through your paces. I mean, it will just challenge you in every way. Uh, we cover the theoretical, theoretical framework, but we are applying it immediately. So it's not about talking about theories, writing papers and all this stuff. It's about discussing the theories. How do they apply to the business environment? Because it's very specific. It's for enterprise, right? So wanting to work as an L&D professional in enterprise. And we give people, you know, I give people all the anecdotal beauty that you can find, which is like, what are the bad behaviors that you find in L&D? Uh, learning styles, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Again, it's never, it doesn't take a stance to say this is the right way either. It's an adult learning setting. So it's pretty much making you inform about what's available, what can be done. And then nothing's going to teach you better than doing that than experience. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 as I watch this kind of from afar, because I pay attention to what you're posting on Twitter and on LinkedIn. The, these cohorts, are they typically eight weeks long? Uh, or that's something I picked up in, in one of them. Is there a... Yeah, Enterprise ID is the only one that is, is that long. And the okay. only reason is because we're trying to condense, you know, my experience into eight weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge in itself starting from the beginning. But the interesting piece about Enterprise ID is that it's an online collaboration cohort as well. So it's not just you showing up to a webinar like this and then go about your business and do your stuff. Now you're going to have to work. You're going to have to make teams with people that are in. We grab about 25 to 30 people. We make about three to four teams. The teams develop their own brand identity. Uh, so that gets you into brand design and all those things. They develop their own identity. Uh, and you, it's a beautiful thing, right? Because you, you see the process of teaming up. Um, we, and the most important part is that anybody that comes to a learn launch is going to hit a wall and the wall is going to be a wall that they have to break through, which is for change. 
And that means that if you are a lurker, you know, it's usually what we call them, people just yeah. want to lay in the back, not do anything, not say so much. Guess what? You cannot do that. You're going to have to come up. I'm going to call you up. You're going to have to express. Because when you go to business, that's not going to set you up for success. And what's going to set you up for success is the ability to communicate and uh, express your, your thoughts. So, so how much, how much time is the, yeah, I was just going to say that core is the longest one. Yeah. The rest of them, the, the ones on tools, they're about four weeks, four weeks. So how much touch time in those cycle times does somebody need to commit to this? So in, in a, in the average week, how many hours might I be spending uh, actively involved in this, both participating in, in the sessions uh, with the teamwork uh, and things that I do on my own. What's my time commitment? Oh, yeah. So for Enterprise ID is a big chunk. Uh, and I say, you know, don't come to Enterprise ID as your first thing because it's, it's quite a lot, uh, especially because it will help you better to come to Enterprise ID if you already have video skills or any type of design skills because your team has to develop products. So they're going to have to develop a training product of some sort. Um, the last one that we did, it was a compliance based product. So people had to develop uh, mode, uh, you know, uh, materials for uh, a HIPAA or the Health uh, in Insurance Portability Accountability Act compliance healthcare. They had to develop that and they also had to develop uh, something for OSHA and food handling. So they get to develop a full suite of training products based on sound instructional systems development and based on sound instructional design theories and frameworks. So, you know, that's a big, that's a big challenge. That's a big thing to put to someone that's never done anything or heard anything in that in enterprise ID, you're going to spend, we, we've been doing the sessions have been about two hours. Uh, and this technically the sessions are two hours twice a week. So that's four hours a week. And then you have to put in your teamwork time and your individual assignment time. So that's probably another three to four hours. Think, uh, you know, if you, depending on how you guys work, uh, how the team is going to work. I mean, this last teams that worked, that went through, they did some amazing work. And I'm going to be showcasing it soon in an in, in episode. But, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's, a, that's a hard one. The, the rest of the stuff, if you learn Camtasia, for example, we're doing things with Camtasia that the people that are able to do with Camtasia that, you know, I can't believe from one perspective. Like I, I you know, I it took me a while to develop my video skills. These people come in. We do one and a half hours. So, you know, we do uh, 90 minute sessions. We do it twice a week. And now we're reducing that a little bit. Right. So we're trying to make it more blended. You got videos and then you come to sessions, but you get feedback on your work. And you start making things from session one. So you start developing uh, video composition from lesson one. We take you through video composition to screencasting to back to video composition again with more multimedia and visual effects. And I mean, we're talking in, in three weeks, people already have a three minute sample that for the most part, when people go through this process, and I think you've seen my post, they are pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I, yeah I've, no, I've noticed that. So what it sounded like as I was trying to do the math as you were talking is that uh, on the bigger program, it was maybe eight hours a week. And of course, a lot of that time is, is flexible. I can do it whenever it's convenient for me rather than scheduled sessions. So it didn't seem to be too arduous. It didn't seem to be too burdensome. So I don't think that there's, there's much of a barrier to get people into that. But, but regarding the scheduled sessions, uh, you know, are, is that synchronous or could that be asynchronous to be in those sessions? It's um, so enterprise ID, it, it's an interesting thing because if you think of it in the way that I run it, it almost runs a little bit like boot camp. So it almost like, <laughs> almost has like focus and, uh, your life stuff on the side a little bit make this part of your priorities because you're going to get a lot of out, out of it uh but enterprise id runs in in that fashion which is 
it has a strong requirement, which is you have to attend the live sessions. So yeah. no other cohort has that hard requirement. Enterprise right. ID has that hard requirement. And yeah, we, you know, there's, there's flexibility for, you know, live events, things happen, stuff like that. You can miss a couple of sessions, but we're not into the fashion of like, oh, I'm just going to watch the videos and then do my thing. You can't because we are breaking people off into groups yeah. in the session, in the live session, and they are doing work in the session. So the key thing is that Enterprise ID is not me throwing rhetoric about theories. Enterprise ID is me presenting a theory to people, presenting an, a design framework, breaking them off in groups, and they figure out what it is. Then they come back and I will correct course if it needs to. But otherwise, I'll say, yeah, that's good. So that's adult learning. Yeah. No other way to put it. I, I noticed that you, you also seem to be uh, uh, spending some time and effort helping people find jobs. Is that part of your the academy? Yes, yes. We're focusing uh, a ton in that. We have a Facebook group. It used to be called the Become ID group. It's called the eLauncher Crew now. And we have the people in there rebrand things. People that actually go through the Enterprise ID programs, they go into that group and become mentors for anybody else that comes in. I'm watching that group as well and monitoring. And uh, we provide job opportunities. I provide uh, small jobs, let's say, that are e-learning launch based. Like, hey, I need somebody to develop a guide for me or some kind of banner or something like that. So those are opportunities to make either get exposure or make, uh, you know, get remunerated for. And then we are definitely now rolling. Yeah, now we're rolling into uh, a more of a coaching program that's coming up. It's really exciting. And that encompasses not just me, but some great people that are helping me out. And they have amazing skills in coaching and connecting and networking. And of course, I coach people too. And uh, but there's different approaches, right? So different people, the different types of help and things like that. So that's the what we're wrapping into. Uh, I like again, I help people in many ways. The re the ways that people got their jobs, for example, you can go to uh, the eLearn Launch YouTube channel, which is um, eLearn Launch. Uh, you know, YouTube slash C. You learn launch you can put it in the links or anything like that but uh in there we do episodes uh for people that have succeeded so we have like seven cases in there of people that have teachers that have come on they did camtasia they did two courses and then they created samples portfolio and boom they got a job and they got a job making i don't know 30 percent more money than i ever made uh <laughs> you know in the industry really yeah. so uh aside from being a consultant so you know that it's always rewarding there's great those are q a sessions that we do there live so you can go watch them and check them out and you'll learn what's going on what people did why they appreciate what we're doing because we're breaking them out of that mold that you know 18 years or 20 years of schooling does to someone well, thank you for all of this. I will uh, put the appropriate links into the show notes here. But basically, if people search on e-learning launch, they'll find you, your YouTube channel, your web presence. Um, and any final uh, words about uh, where this is going to evolve? What's your vision for all of this? Well, ideally, yeah, we're looking to scale out and uh, make it so we can help the most people as possible. And um, primarily, you know, the, the essence, the core essence doesn't change. Uh, this is not really about making money or taking over the world. This is about helping people get what they need to do, just learn what they need to learn and get there on the essentials quicker. Um, you know, can you take a more traditional approach? Sure, you can, but now you're talking time. And see, if you have the time, sure, absolutely. If you got two years, go take a master's degree. If you have three years, go take a master's degree and then go learn some stuff. Uh, or in the meantime, learn skills. If you want six months, go take an internship. 
none of this is, you know, none of those things are bad. <laughs> the whole approach here is just saying you're in an industry that is uh, heavily influenced by flashy and trendy stuff and also marketing. So digital media, visual design is about 80% of the success you'll get jumping into the field. So you can get in once you get in. There's not much, you know, once you're in, you got the title, you can then work your way out to continue in the progression and do other jobs in, in the learning and development field. Uh, in terms of what we're doing and what's coming up, yeah, keep track with us. We, uh, you know, we actually give out free courses every now and then. We give out free opportunities for you to join our courses, heavy discounts. In the YouTube channel, we do live episodes, and that's what we do uh, on our birthday celebration, for example. We did an eight-hour streaming, you know, live stream, and uh, we had everybody there. Now, also that I forgot to mention, by the way, that we do augmented reality, and we got some of the key people that you see in the industry doing instruction for us. So uh, Betty Danowitz does augmented reality, um, and with Destry Hildebrand, those two folks are amazing, and everybody that does that course is able to do augmented reality. How many instructional designers you know that can do augmented reality? too many how many instructional designers you know that can do video too many how many instructional designers you know that are going to be able to do heavy strategies on micro learning eh, not too many either maybe a little more but we got robin the felice uh joining the academy starts next week with a course a cohort on micro learning so yeah that's the future the future is we're bringing awesome people and providing greater and better opportunities. Excellent. Well, Alex, thank you so much for participating in this interview with me and sharing uh, with others e-learning launch and what it's all about. And uh, I'll, I'll point them to the appropriate URLs in the show notes. Um, but uh, uh, thanks for your time and have a great week. Absolutely, Guy. Thank you so much, everyone watching. Uh, thank you again for supporting this and thank you, Guy, for doing what you do. You're one of the ones that keeps the industry honest. <laughs> All right. Cheers.